Good morning, Erin. Hey, Lisa. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Just um, trying to balance another week with my kid in quarantine, but... <laughs> oh, oh. I can't wait till this is over. Right. I know. I keep thinking it's got to peak soon, you know? Yeah. yeah. How old is your child? Uh, so I've got a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So... The three-year-old is home. The one-year-old is at daycare, which is nice. We can kind of make it work, you know, that way. So, but when both are home, it's very challenging. Yeah, yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. How was it? Did you have a good long weekend? Yeah, it was uneventful, but it was good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did a lot of walking, which was nice. Get outside. Oh, you're brave. It was so cold. Yeah, um, sat, sat Sunday actually was really nice. Oh, was though, it? Even though the temp was, um, said it was like 20 or 29. No, I don't think it reached 29, but there was no wind and it was sunny. Oh, okay. The wind so makes I, such um, a difference. It really does. I actually took a walk, um, the loop on the spit. Low tide oh, nice. was really nice. But to do that, you definitely need hiking boots. <laughs> oh, yeah, especially because we've had so much rain lately. Yeah. Was and then with the rocks and, rocks and stuff like that. It wasn't really muddy, but, you know, the spit is sand, so. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you from this area originally? You from? No, North? no. But um, right now I'm in Situate. Okay. Where are you from originally? I grew up in Lowell. Oh, okay. Not too yeah. far. Nope, about an hour, an hour and 15, something like that. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. So you're probably used to the cold a little bit. <laughs> used to the cold, definitely. Um, really like the feeling of cold water on my legs, which is- Oh, really? Yeah, like Ham we grew up going to Hampton Beach. Yeah. And um, yeah water was really cold <laughs> oh I'm I cannot stand cold water I'm such a baby I I like I don't know how people do it I actually saw someone um in Little Harbor yesterday they had a wetsuit on obviously but they were windsurfing mm -hmm. and it was <laughs> I feel like they like thought it would be a good idea but <laughs> watching this person it was kind of like hard not to laugh because they were just like it was like a kite, like in a windstorm. I mean, they were just like flopping back and forth. They'd fall in the water. Oh my gosh. I was like, I think it's a little too windy for that, but. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I don't like it that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it in the summer. I like it in the summer. Yeah. When it's hot out and you, you put your legs in. I get restless legs. So that really, oh. really helps, which is funny. But I watched, a, um, I watched a documentary called My Octopus Teacher. Yes, I saw that too. That was so cool. And I that, loved that. that's what that guy was saying, like going in the water, just getting your body used to it. And it, it was, what a, what a nice um, documentary. That was like a, such a sleeper film. Like I think everyone really enjoyed it. It was just kind of like calming. And I feel like it definitely made me, feel bad about eating calamari now don't you feel differently uh, oh for sure yep for sure <laughs> these little creatures are so smart I feel awful you know. <laughs> <More> calamari <laughs> my older daughter won't um won't eat any kind of fish because you know of course she had a fish tank <laughs> oh <laughs> so, growing up so she never so she never um got into eating fish which Does she weird. eat meat? Yeah, oh, yes. Yep. She oh, eats. that's so funny. <laughs> but it's just, I think because of the relation that she, you know, she just related would eating fish to, you know, the goldfish floating in her tank. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, because most of the times it's like, you know, there's a lot of like pescatarians out there who will eat fish, but not, you know, like cows or pigs. But I've never, right. a, I don't even know what that would be. A, someone that just eats, doesn't eat fish. <laughs> I don't know if there's a word for it. I, yeah, I don't know. 
but um, now she doesn't even, there's, she, I think even just the smell of it now, because she's never had it. She, I think she yeah. tried it in her adult life. She's tried it a couple of times, but she just can't handle it now. <laughs> I get that. It's definitely an acquired, t- like it takes a while, I think, to get into fish. Yeah. Like, well, I don't know. I grew up, um, my dad used to go deep sea fishing um, in, oh, cool. and um, always came back with a huge cod fish, um, oh, like five, I'm talking five feet long. Oh my God. Um, we have a couple of pictures of him when he won the pool. <laughs> and um, so we, you know, we, we grew up eating cod anyways. I bet it was like amazingly fresh couldn't get fresher than that oh definitely definitely I think as a kid you get tired of it but today that's my favorite white yeah tired. do you fry it or what do you do with it normally I usually um bake it um, yeah and I I pan fried it maybe twice um but um, also I put it in like a fish stew, like a um, seafood stew. Oh, I love seafood stew. Yeah. With like, mine is usually like a tomato. Well, I guess that would be a tomato base if it's yeah. a stew versus a chowder. But, that, yeah. yeah, that's that's so good. Have you had um, Bia's seafood stew? I think I got that the last time I went. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so good. <laughs> it is. It is really good. It's like so such a good winter comfort meal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm on a shrimp and a um, salmon kick these days. A shrimp and, sorry, what was the last part? Shrimp and salmon. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, salmon is delicious and shrimp is really good. We, we actually, we put a little like survey on our Instagram account for people saying like, what would you want the raw bar to serve? And so many people wrote in shrimp, 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 shrimp cocktail, you know, shrimp. So we'll definitely have to get some shrimp on the menu. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's always a big hit, I think. Especially in summertime. Mm-hmm. Yep. I have a, um, I have a marinade that I usually do. It's, um, I alternate between basil and lemon and um, alternate that with, um, cilantro and lime oh yum yeah it's really good that sounds like simple but really refreshing definitely simple definitely refreshing um, the basil one I put um hot peppers in hot peppers oh, and then yum. with the cilantro one I put uh jalapeno oh a little kick yeah little kick Hi, Allie. Hi, Mr. Spencer. Hi. Hi, good morning. Oh, let's see. Cam is on. <clears throat> I could talk food all day. <laughs> oh, same, especially when I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Jean. So Erin, I'm going to promote you only when after the cook estate. All right, yeah, I saw that on the agenda. Okay, good. Sounds good. I'll be here.
Good morning, Bill. How are you? Good morning, Paul. Good morning. How are you? Hey, Paul. Good. How are you? <clears throat> <clears throat> so we're waiting for Wayne. Yep. I presume I presume Dan is call, call, coming in. Here's Wayne. I'm back. Brian, good morning, Wayne. Hey, Wayne. <clears throat> morning, Dawn and Pam. Hi, Lisa. Sorry, yeah. I do. I do know that, like, you know, we need the space. So, like, once we get the file cabinets, and you know, we can, uh, you know. I mean, is there something you guys need? I get rid of that. I mean, you took two cabinets. That's true. Yeah, because I, I was like, you I, don't all those books. I don't need any of this. Yeah. Hey, Pam. Yep. Can you mute yourself, please? Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> why don't we start the, uh, the meeting? I'll call the meeting to order at uh, 10.06 a.m. Uh, President Lisa McGonigal, Bill McGowan, Paul Kearse, and Wayne Sachuk. And our first uh, order of business is, I, I believe, an update on the Cook Estate. Yes. Somebody here from, I think there might be two or three people here from the Cook Estate, so. And I see Jane just popped on, so let me promote her as well. Good morning. Hey Jane, how are you? Good, how about, how about you? Um, so I believe that um, Sean Hardy had a meeting this morning with the town of Braintree's mayor on another project, so he's not here. Um, I believe he has been in touch with, um, Wayne, has he, be, has he been in touch with you or, uh, and Brian? Uh, so I had a conversation with Sean last week. Uh, I think it was early last week on next steps. He just needed some clarification. And uh, I told him that um, he needed to further the design um, along so that he could submit it to the sewer commission for review with the, the application. Uh, and we talked about some of the specifics of, you know, where the pipe was going to go uh, up the driveway and kind of leverage as much grass area in the in front of the school as possible so you're not in the middle of the road or in a more repairs there uh and also uh i sent an email to the schools uh, asking if they had any comments or if they would like the cook estates or the town or the sewer commission to talk or the board of health to talk at one of their meetings on connecting to their station and uh they said they again that they would consider it and get back to us Okay. We also completed a bedroom count with the town assessor, and that's been um, given to um, 
I believe, Lisa, you have a copy of it? Um, yes. Great. And I have requested a water use record, uh, records from Brenda Davis, Brenda Douglas, sorry. I expect um, I'll either hear back from her later today or first thing tomorrow morning. Um, so uh, he's, Sean is also waiting on a quote from the surveyor uh, for the, to, um, to survey the route and confirm there are no major obstacles. Um, that I think after a conversation with you, Brian, there's water and um, gas in the roadway. Um, and I think you requested that we get off the road and onto the grass and the parking area as soon as possible um, when considering a route. Um, so the, uh, according to what Sean um, is under the understanding, they will not consider, you guys will not consider our application until we have a full set of design plans ready to discuss but they will leave the item on um, your agenda uh, for further updates. Any questions or comments on that? When do you think you're going to have complete, uh, you know, design set for us to look at? Um, Brian, did he give you any indication? No, we, we didn't talk schedule. Um... I would expect you'll have something in your hands in the next two weeks. Okay. I think it's important to just have a to have a sketch of what's um, where what the, what the route is and stuff like that, so that we could sort of. You have one. Yeah. You, oh, yeah. Okay. Good. You have one. Um, it's been sent. It was sent to you a month ago. Um, right. It goes. Okay. Uh, that's okay. It's uh, just to make sure. I, I want to make sure you guys have it. So you were given a sketch by. Um, by Sean sent to you with a route running from the Deer Hill pump station down Sawyer and in um, the little grass access area so we didn't have to go further down the hill and um, take the roadway up um, all the way down the hill. So does those, that go around the back of the building or does it go around the front? The front. Okay. Yeah, basically, Wayne, I think it was a, you know, kind of a GIS map with um, a red line showing the, the, the concept route down to the school, up the driveway into the pump station. And uh, so I talked with Sean about furthering that with some actual, you know, utility and some survey and uh, design detail. Okay, good. Thank you. What else do you need from us? That's about it right now. Okay. So, so um, Bill, the uh, Lisa and I, when we talked about it, the similar with CJC, this is kind of a continuing project. We we just thought we'd keep it, wh whether there's an update or not, have it on an, as an agenda item rolling forward. If you guys uh, feel yeah, no, I think we 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 ask that we do this every two weeks, like a month ago. So, yeah, that's fine, and I'll make sure it gets on Sean's calendar. Um, every two weeks so that because he's our, our key point person um, and he's definitely been working it uh, it's it's um, but right now I think he is getting a price for a surveyor yeah. I just want to add to um, there was a question last meeting about whether or not that this would require um, a warrant on the town meeting and I connected with the town council and it's a little complicated because you, it, when you're looking at the both the sewer rules and then also the title five for the board of health, they don't quite jibe. And so she's looking into that. It, it seems like I was talking to Christine here. He's like, it's not a matter of like the board of health trumping sewer. They have to kind of mesh. So, I wrote up um, a draft warrant just in case because they were due last Friday. And so it's there as a placeholder, um, but she's gonna continue to look into it more. What particularly is on the warrant? Is it the, okay. is it the connection or is it the old colony component? No, it would be um, expanding the sewer district so that Cook could um, connect. And it's basically saying, What's the objective that it's expansion of the sewer district is to allow Cook Estate to connect to public sewer. It's necessary to reduce public health risk from contamination to the Lily Pond watershed. So, so I think that would go through anyway, 
but um, I'm just trying to see if it's even necessary. And I, and I thought there was something in our rec rules and regulations that the only way that we can increase the sewer district is either by a uh, town meeting or a, you know, say, you know, some sort of public safety situation. Right. And so where this is a public health emergency, I'm not sure. I think it can trump it, but um, she's just going to verify. Okay. Now, if, if it is extending the or enlarging the sewer district, it potentially means that the, the properties on the opposite side of the road could connect on the sewer mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of right. Um, and I don't know if that, you know, how that's going to, how that's going to work out. It might mean, for instance, that um, uh, Fair Oaks could potentially include all of their houses in it automatically. So yeah, it, but it doesn't have to go in front of, it has to go in front of the parcel, doesn't it, Wayne? Not, not like, it can't just go in front can't of the street. Go, yeah, it can't go down the street. No, no. It's the street that's going to dictate. Right, but it. we're not, we're not going to really go, we're not going into the, the Fair Oaks area at all, so. Well, aren't you coming out, probably coming out so where the about three uh, houses. emergency emergency area is or further down? Um, where are you coming out to be uh, to uh, Soya yeah. Street? What location? I thought it would be a direct abutter, not a street. Is that true, Brian? No, it's private property between it. Yeah, I, there, I, I think there are three houses. Brian, you're on mute. Excuse me? Over that, yeah. So I'm not sure the the legal, um, you know, consequence of, but I believe you need to be an abutter to the, you know, you have needed frontage along the sewer route. But if we wanted to avoid any question of Fair Oaks, again, obviously the entrance of Fair Oaks has has frontage on Sawyer Street, um, and they were proposing to come across uh, out of their property at the fire road across the street from that. I don't know if it's feasible to run down on your property and not come out, out onto Sawyer Street, maybe go under the wall um, after you pass the Fair Oaks frontage. Um, that way we're only dealing with, you know, the three houses, three or four houses along uh, Sawyer Street that may want to connect. It would just reduce the complication of, of a Fair Oaks question uh, to Wayne's point. Yeah, and I, I, and I would not be in fit. I mean, I think we should keep that line away from it. You know, I don't, we don't want to, we can't hook up really. So but. But I think if under the other regulation, this is an emergency and it's that type of thing, we don't have to go to town meeting to extend the district. We're just going to do it individually. And we didn't go to the town. We're not going to go to town meeting for, for Chief Justice Cushing Highway away from that. But in fact, Jesus. as it's the pipe is going down the street, it potentially could hook up those people. I think there are three houses, three three houses that it, the new um, pipe will go by, two on the Fair Oaks side and one on um, our side of the street. Because I think if we use that access road, which goes it's it's almost dead across from Fair Oaks, but there's one house at the edge of Fair Oaks that we would buy we would go by. Right. It's it's just a <clears throat> it's just my thought for the future in terms of how the thing is because it would be it would require to having a map and stuff at town meeting you know, for the article to show people where the where it's being where the district is being exp expanded. So I don't think it's I don't think we need that. And I met you, you mentioned Old Colony a couple of times. Is Old Colony going to be uh, the method that you're going to finance part of this or is, or is it something that um, is different? I don't think we know yet. Um, I think the last piece of information I got from Pam is that the interest rate um, for Old Colony is about 5%. And which is a little high given um, everything else in the market at the moment. But it sounds to me like the town does not do abatements they any longer. I don't know if I'm, I'm testing whether this is accurate. And Old Colony is the funding mechanism for um, an, uh, financing abatement. Well, Don, Don Piat is on, so we can ask him directly. Now, abatement versus um, a different name, versus an assessment or a... Betterment. 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 I'm sorry. Sorry, my 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 mistake. 
So, so uh, Don, what, what, what is your thoughts? Uh, I apologize. I was researching something else for uh, the the, <laughs> the South Main Street project. So, um, could you repeat that question? Is there is there a betterment uh, opportunity um, for Cook Estates over twenty years? Um, I, I I honestly don't know at this point. I'd have to do some research. So, is the this is because their septic systems have failed, correct? And so, I mean, that, that is one of the primary focuses that, that Bull Colony Network supports. Um, they're the method that would normally go through that. Now, since this is a whole neighborhood, um, that may be different, uh, but it would still be assessed at the market rate. Um, unless we have something different and I'd have to, I'd have to, I'd have to look. Um, I don't think the town did it. I don't think it would be five percent necessarily, but um, we just we just did one at four percent. Remember, Stasco <laughs> that that three ninety is a different different animal. I wasn't even bringing that up. Yes, it is. Um, totally different. But I can do. I can. I can find out what that cost would be and what if we can. That would it. be. I mean, that would be good because all the inf the information that because we have 27 homeowners and although our properties may be worth a million dollars, there's a lot of people who, who you know, didn't anticipate a, a 50 to $70,000 expense, one-time expense. So just so, so everybody understands. So even though that you go through old colony to, to apply in a situation like this, when a, a new, and if it was just one house and your septic failed, it, it still is funded by the town. The town funds it still. So I'm not sure where the 5% number came from for an interest rate. It would still be funded through the town. Usually the construction, the whole application fee and process goes through Old Colony to reduce some administrative headache on the town side. But the town is still pulling a bond from the Mass Clean Water Trust. We're still doing all the management of the money coming in, paying of the debt service. So, um, Again, because this is a bigger project, something I haven't been involved with before, where this is a whole neighborhood uh, septic system that is failing, I'd have to just do a little bit more research and talk to our treasure collector about um, our relationship with the old colony and the borrowing. So I can get back to you at a subsequent meeting. That would be helpful. Sure. Um, Allie has their hand up. Hi, thank you, Lisa. Um, this is a question actually for uh, Mr. Piat. Um, would any of this work qualify for ARPA funds? Where we, you know, we're running a, a, a sewer line down a town road, and if the sewer um, gets expanded and other, <clears throat> excuse me, and other properties not related to Cook Estate wind up hooking up, um, most of that would be on our dime, of course. Um, and then um, this being you know, quite a hardship for most of the homeowners just to tie into sewer, just to hook up the house. Um, this additional construction um, down the street and also any upgrades to the station um, seems like maybe the, the town should, um, you know, maybe help us out with that. And ARPA funds seem to be like a really good way to do that. Um, I don't know how much the town has received or what has been um, targeted for that money, but I wanted to at least bring it up. Uh, the project that, uh, uh, without knowing the numbers, I mean, again, that's something that's out of my purview. I, I don't approve what can be used there. There are sewer projects that can be used uh, for that funding, water projects, uh, a number of things, but to have ARPA and the town pay for it, I, I just don't know the fair and how fair and equitable that is to other people that have run into the situation that are paying this over a 20 year period. Um, but I can, I can bring that up too. I can bring that up to Chris senior and, and see where that goes. But, uh, right. I tried to call the request to be honest, but okay. I tried to call the, um, and speak to, um, somebody this morning and I, um, I spoke to, um, the selectman's office to find out how, Cohasset goes about the request because they think this money falls under town manager account and the use of it does not have to go before town meeting. It so, does not have to go to town meeting, but the uh, board or the select board would have authorized any project. 
be correct. Around. Right. So if if the so you know this is probably not a question for the sewer commission directly because um, of the channels of approval, but it certainly would help if we had their support. Um, as you know, if we decided that we wanted to make a presentation to the town manager and or the select board to try to um, you know see if they would would use some of that money toward this. Um, it, it, could I get a be just better understanding? Because again, these questions will end up coming to me anyway. <laughs> um, sure. Could you just explain your reasoning again why ARPA would be, you know, a good funding source for uh, your neighborhood specifically? Sure, because when is a well, specific ARPA, benefit to one particular sure. area. Sure. Well, the the ARPA funds, um, as you know, can be spent on any government service that the town chooses. Um, so. Um, you know, and it can't be saved or put into stabilization, it has to be used for an investment in the community. Um, and some of the other towns are using it for, um, you know, items like water, sewer, broadband, you know, things that are kind of like clean and simple. Um, yeah. And so this would certainly fall under that category. And I, um, you know, and I think that, you know, under the circumstances, you know, the residents of Cook Estates, um, you know, we we had no idea that our septic was going to fail, of course. I mean, it did pass through um, all of the town approvals and not that it is not it is the fault of the town or the builder. I'm not trying to point fingers, but I do feel that, um, you know, the town does have a responsibility to to, um, you know, approve and um, you know, uh, inspect uh, systems like this. Um, so when we, you know, when the residents purchase here, um, you know, we don't expect to have this sort of issue um, because we assume that it has gone through all the proper channels and all the proper inspections and all of that. And I understand that, you know, the, the location isn't ideal and the soil is not ideal. Um, and we are, more than willing to, to tie in. We really appreciate the opportunity. We, we understand the situation um, and how it relates to the town water supply and everything. But um, I guess under the circumstances, I'm hoping that it would be considered um, because of the hardship that it's caused us. Um, so that's where I guess I'm coming from. Sure, I mean, that can definitely be proposed to town manager and select board. Uh, so uh, way above my pay grade to approve those types of things. But it, we, like you said, uh, there is an extent of that money that can be used essentially for any governmental purpose along with water and sewer projects. So um, again, you can propose to bring that up and plead your case. And I don't know where it would go, but. Um, well, I, I just thought maybe it would be worth a try. And I wanted to see how the sewer commission, uh, the members of the sewer commission felt about that. Um, and if maybe you would you would get behind us uh, with our request. I'd like to point out, it's Wayne Slachuk, that under the Acts of 2013, Chapter 147, and I think, Dawn, this is something that you might want to look at um, on page five uh, of seven and six of seven, um, this <clears throat> act of the state legislator is, is allowing the Cohasset uh, Sewer Commission to do a number of things, which include um, assessing money and, and uh, uh, making exceptions and, and doing the, uh, a bit, um, uh, the collection of, of the, the, uh, the money that's owed and stuff like that. So uh, it, it gives quite a bit of power for us to do what it is that we want to do here. How, however, it, town meeting is required for any borrowing authorization and appropriation of funds that is outside of your purview directly. So, to, to still to go about borrowing the funds, again, I don't know what the cost of this specific project is. And there are a lot of needs in town. So to use up all of our, our or any funds in general, I'm just saying you have to go to town meeting to authorize borrowing because I can't imagine, well, I know the sewer department does not have funds to cover this. Uh, and I doubt even the money from ARPA would even cover it. If, if, if town approved all of our money, I don't think it would cover it. So we would still need to go to town meeting to authorize borrowing and the appropriation of the fund. So you may be able to, as part of law, we, we in conjunction with Treasure Collector, we apportion 
and we so send bills on the tax bill to pay for these betterment, but you still need town meeting approval for the projects themselves. Yeah, there's there's no, I, I don't think there's any, there's no disagreement on on this end, I don't believe. Um, we're, we're basically, um, I, I think there's two different subject matters here. One is um, how, it's, how it's funded, you know, the mechanism for funding and, and payment, um, which is your specialty, which uh, we don't disagree at all. Any, any, um, any use of funds has to be approved at town meeting for what it's, uh, what, what it's gonna be uh, spent on. And certainly the sewer uh, commission, um, it's, it's our purview to uh, construct uh, an agreement on a, on a sewer line and um, you know, what those costs are um, and what, again, what methods are available um, to collect those expenses um, and then have it approved by uh, town meeting. Um, I think exactly. there's one thing, there, yeah, so I think there's a, one, one small issue I'd like a Pam to talk to council about. Um, it's kind of splitting hairs, but um, I don't believe that we are creating a new sewer district at all. Um, I, I absolutely like to stay away from that part of it. Um, I believe that we have what's called a sewer line extension because we're extending the sewer line from Deer Hill to Cook Estates. We're not creating a new sewer line for Cook and running it to Deer Hill. So I, I believe that it's a sewer line extension based on uh, what is in our rules and regulations. And that, that may help um, get things through a little easier. Um, so if you could check with council on that, the, the, it's the difference between extending the line versus a new sewer district. Uh, and this is something we went through with CJC that is a sewer line extension, not a new district. I would still like you to look at that, uh, the language though in, in the state um, things, because any bylaw adapted pursuant to the authority granted to the town by the, this act may include authorization of the board of sewer commissioners to add without a vote of town meeting to the sewer districts created pursuant to this act, properties located within the sewer needs, et cetera, et cetera, and to do the assessment of the fees and stuff. Um, so if, if, there's, if there are things that we have already been voted on and approved by the state and in the state's information, you know, records, I don't know how we, we can't use that. So, so I'd ask- I'm we, telling we, you now, you have to borrow, you need to go to town meeting. To appropriate funds, you have to go to town meeting. You can create your district. I, I think that's in I think that's in paragraph seventeen of it's in, in the very last end of it where um, it does state that um, the the town manager approves the uh, the funding. The town manager. You can send it to me, and I'll I'll, I'll look at it. Yeah. Um, I've just, yeah. I've just never never heard or any other community do that. So. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is a one loophole that you have. I, I doubt it, but I'd be happy to read it. I don't know if it's a loophole. I think it's it's something that could yeah, be- Town meeting authorizes borrowing. There's, there's no doubts about that. Town meeting authorizes borrowing. I don't think we're borrowing, we're really lending. How would we lend if you don't have the money? Again, we'll, we'll get to this offline. I'm not going to. Yeah, okay. yeah, I, 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 I don't. I don't want to drill into the financial oil field right. there. Um, uh, right, but, it's, but it has to do with money. No, no I know. Yeah, exactly. But um, I, I think we got important to, to really have this because we're we've on several occasions we've wanted to do something that's practical and this and we haven't done it yet. No, I, I got it. I got that article in front of me because I used it for something else, and um, I wanted to, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. I think I think we go through it. I, and, and I think Lisa, if you can, uh, it's in it's in section sixteen, um, where it states that um, the territory covered by the sewer district may be amended from time to time by the sewer board of commissioners after public hearing conducted to consider the amendment upon approval. The Department of uh, Environmental Protection, if required by law and upon enactment by town meeting of a bylaw defining or establishing new or expanded sewer districts, provided, however, that the Board of Sewer Commission uh, votes not to amend the territory. 
um, and that's a two thirds majority vote at town meeting. And um, so that's why I'm saying it's not a new sewer district. So that would keep us from having to go to town meeting. And um, I will get you the provision where it's, it states um, where the, uh, the, the town approves the funding. So I'll pull that later. Yeah, and, and, and Paul, if you do, would just send it out to everybody so we all have the same sheet of music. Yeah. And this is in the regulations, Paul? Yes. 2013 regulations? 2013, um, that's section 16. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So section 16 talks about a sewer district um, and that has to be a two third majority vote. But if we're not creating a new district, then what we're doing is we have a sewer line extension that's different. I have no disagreement with that. Yeah. Okay. My, my thing is the funding. The funding piece, again, right. I, and I, I just pulled the file from CJC, which I think I printed a lot of these regulations out. I'll review, but again, okay. the, the financing piece of it, again, I, and I don't even know what the estimated scope might be. Do we have a number of what, what the cost might be at all? No? Okay. Um, it's greater than a half a million. <laughs> okay. And, and so I, I know just looking at the capital projects we have, yep. like the suit, yep. half a million, okay. I'll read, we can, we can catch up again once I've gone through a little bit more research on this. Now, uh, is this going to trigger a prevailing wage uh, installation if the town is going to be paying for the actual installation of the pipes? Absolutely. I, I was thinking that the town would be paying for the, the, uh, the, the residents would be paying for the, the EDU fee, and then they would be putting in the, the um, doing the work and stuff themselves. So usually, when these happen, when we're doing a betterment, you are bettering a specific area by here putting in a sewer area, a sewer line, or an extension, as you call it, right? So the construction of building this is then split across the properties that are being better, that are adding value because of this, right? Then there's a separate cost of each property owner then connecting. The, co the cost from getting from their home to that extension. So again, and, and I, I don't know how you got to come up with, with certain costs. I think this is outside your normal connection fee because that is for established, usually established sewer system. So if one, again, and I don't know Cook States that well where ledge comes into place and other things, but if you have one property that sits on ledge that could cost twice as much as a, another property that doesn't have it, the cost to actually connect would probably will be different, but the betterment assessed would be split equally among, you know, if it's a million dollars and there's 10 homes, a hundred thousand dollars would be assessed to each property to be then paid over the betterment period. Or until a home is 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 is, is sold and they may they might do that then, unless they assume the betterment, et cetera. So Don, just information. We have an existing underground um gravity fed and and uh, vacuum fed system that we're hoping on our properties uh, that will be connected right off sewer. So that the point is to use our existing infrastructure um, and we and then the cost to us would of course be the EDU cost and the bringing it from the end of Deer Hill down to the to the little entrance area and then um, the cost of connecting it and refitting our existing system. We just don't that have- made, That makes a little bit more sense why a half a million num dollar number yeah. makes a little bit more That's sense. That's why that number is what it is. Cause ha you know, we okay. roughly half of it will be EDU and then they'll, uh, they'll, there'll be a cost of connecting, um, getting it down the street and in and retrofitting our existing system. So okay. um, yeah, I, just to um, circle back real quick, uh, Don, section seven, it, it does say that there is a, uh, this, the financial operations of the source system shall be an enterprise fund uh, as defined in uh, section 53 F and a half of chapter 44. Yeah, and so betterments says, usually live within the enterprise funds. Okay, yeah. yep. So it says any expenditures from the fund shall be made upon joint authorization by the board of sewer commission and the town manager. The town shall by vote at town meeting determine whether it shall pay the whole or a portion of the cost of the sewage 
in the sewer system. So it's pretty much defined there. That well, it has I to. Think, I don't that, think this is what this is this this is about. That we're not going to go under that provision because we're not. You know, when this is not a town project. It's right. Project. That's what we have to determine. If it's a sewer line extension for this private property, then it, it falls in that same category that CJC did. Yes. Right. If they're paying, so I'm going to just leave that alone. I'm done talking about it on my end because I don't have all the facts. And what, again, three commissioners, I get it. Yeah. Uh, but you guys have to come up with what you're doing for me to actually understand what, right. what we're doing. CJC is a totally different animal. So right. to reference CJC, to me, does not make sense. I, I don't know why we keep doing that. But um, I hear you, and I'll read the provision. But if we have to borrow to do this, we need to go to town meeting. End of story. That's correct. Yeah, that's how it reads, no matter what. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll look at it. But again, so if it's a half a million, I know the sewer budget does not have a half a million dollars. You don't have a half a million to do this project, which would require, again, town meeting you might you have a half a million to retain earnings but you have a capital plan i don't think you ha have half a million to spend i don't so, think we're spending a half a million dollars period we're not okay, okay. because you, we're not spending money for the privilege fee at all which yep. is about half the cost and they are spending the money to to connect this up um and so it's not we're not borrowing any money they're responsible for approximately half <clears throat> and we're lending them half of the fee. Well, you're bringing up though betterment. So again, the reason I'm talking this way, and, and it, I keep saying that you have to approve borrowing and, and expenses, is I've just heard you ask me a few different times about old colony network betterments and how to assess and, and collect payments, those, which, is those not that, the which is not Cook Estates. That's right. And I'm not dealing with old colony. I, I don't think old colony is necessary because it's using cohesive money and it's a 5% fee, and you, they, they're gonna spend more if they try to do it, if they do it that way. So again, I guess if you come to me with some, some like hard data on what we're actually trying to accomplish with funding or what, what needs to be done from a money standpoint, let's, let's talk that. Because it, now this is, again, I, I just feel like I've gone around in my brain about how, how you guys are doing this project. Because this is the first I've really gotten in depth with Cook Estates, because I'm not public health, I'm not, <laughs> I'm finance. So no, I, I, know, I know, I'm on, I'm totally on board with it. it it's either a private project or it isn't. Right, yeah. we're not doing it. The sewer yeah. commission is not doing this project. We're only giving permission to tie in because of a situation where they're, um, uh, that their system has failed to give them permission. Now it may be that the town through everybody here, uh, ends up giving them an easement over a portion of Sawyer Street to go from their property to going through the public property and then going over to um, the, the pump station. But, but in that case, the easement may need, may need to be approved by town meeting, but that may make it so that no one else can tie into that line. So there's different things to think about. <clears throat> Who applies for the easement? Is that part of the process that um, in, in the detailed plans? When does that happen? I don't, I don't know if it, that is a method of doing it, it be, but it, it may be a method of preventing anybody else from tying into that line. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it would be the applicant would probably, you know, through their attorney or whatever and, and see it. But I'm just bringing that up as another little thing that maybe would help um, not getting into the position of you're extending the, the, the town's collection system. You're not extending the, the physical area. You're just using, you know, you're just adding someone, adding a, a, a separate entity onto the. Yeah, so we're just basically, we're, we're extending the, we we're extending the line from Deer Hill to Cook. Right. It's going to be it's going to be it's going to be privately funded, and maybe your mechanism for financing it is Old Colony. I think that's where we're at. Yeah, 
And, and I think that, that what, what differentiates this from anything else is the fact that there is a you know, public health emergency that, that's pushing us all to do this. So it does sort of change some things, but anyway. Can I ask um, one question, just one more? And again, I know I'll, I'll wait for more information, but, but Jane, uh, is it the assumption that you're, you guys would privately fund this with your own, so you guys would pool money somehow? I guess, how would you the, as a group, you guys would so the, pool it and then pay it directly? So the condo association has 27. So we'll do one application to the sewer commission that was determined by your town attorney um, who looked at our condo docs. Um, we'll, we'll be assessed an EDU number of bedrooms, right? Based mm -hmm. on the, the bedroom count. And then we'll go back and actually, that will be the determination of how much each house has to pay. That's part of that will be whether they have two, three or four bedrooms. Okay, and so in, in the commission is my, my question then, it, the EDU is a connection fee outside the cost of running the pipe yep. from Deer Hill to Sawyer. Right. right. How would you pay, so that's for the EDU connection, how would you then pay for that construction cost? We'd have to Same assess, way. we'd have to assess residents um, for the entire amount. So it's uh, it's onerous when you're talking about, a you know, Give or take thirty thousand, twenty-seven to thirty thousand dollar EDU cost for um, which we would love to be able to offer people a betterment option there, um, and then we're going to have to figure out how to finance um, the uh, the cost um, assessing and and potentially a loan, um, which, which is why Jane, I think. I hate to keep bringing this up, but the ARPA funds seem like a perfect vehicle for this, and and it's, um, and it is, uh, uh, you know, it has been deemed a, a town emergency. Um, it, we've got a, a a deadline in order to, you know, complete the comply with the request to the door, um, and this really does benefit the town water supply, um, and again. The septic system was built uh, in a location and on soil that was really, I think we can all agree, not acceptable. So um, I, I do want to push this point a little further um, with all due respect and um, see if the town will take uh, you know, a little responsibility for that piece of it and help us by, <clears throat> excuse me, by meeting us halfway. I mean, this, um, you know, where we're, the EDU is very expensive. Uh, we may have to modify our existing piping. We're going under the assumption right now that it's going to hook up uh, and everything's the right size, but that may not be the case, which in turn would cost even, you know, increase these costs even more. Um, and this is a tremendous hardship. There are a lot of people up here that are on, uh, you know, they're, they're older and they live on, um, you know, a, a particular income. And, um, you know, I, I, I do think that these ARPA funds would be, you know, it, it's a perfect use for them. I know another town got, you know, $4 million um, from the state for this. So, you know, I'm assuming that Cohasset will, you know, will have uh, a, a, also a healthy amount of money. Um, and I know that there are a lot of other um, uh, committees and boards in town that are, um, you know, vying for a little piece of it and making presentations, um, you know, to uh, or planning to make presentations to the town manager and the select board. And I am just asking for the opportunity to to do that as well, um, because I, I, I do think that it would um, it would really help us out. And, and Don, I'm happy to follow up with you if you'd like after the meeting, it, once you find out, you know, once you do your due diligence on that. Yeah, so I guess from my standpoint now, it, it it's up to to folks to go through town manager and the select board. Um, I mean, I, I'm included in in putting coming up with a list of projects to present. But we're still going through trying to figure out the best use for the town of some of this this funding. Coming up with a list of projects for the uh, select board to approve. Um, so I mean, I, I think your your best bet would be to reach out to the town manager. I've taken okay. some notes and I'm going to let him know that this will be coming down. Um, okay, well, I mean, the, the fact that this affects the town water supply, I think would, would you know, certainly elevates the request. Sure. 
Okay. Um, Thank you. All right. Um, I think we should probably move on to another thing and then, but um, certainly we'd welcome Cook Estate back in two weeks on the 1st of February. Yeah, so, Thank you. Um, so Pam, if you could let us know um, what the attorney says on doing the line extension versus a whole new sewer district. Uh, see, that was very helpful to um, explain yeah. that. I'll get right back to her. Okay, yeah, because um, if it's determined that we're just doing a line extension, which I believe that's what we're doing, that's going to um, that's going to determine the scope of the project, which then outlines what type of funding mechanisms are available or not available. Right. I'll get that wrapped up sooner than later. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, thank you. So I think we have the beer garden now, next up on the agenda. Yep, we're here. Okay, so let me promote Ryan and Aaron to panelists. And I see Dan just popped on too. Hello. Hello. Hi, good morning. Good morning. The floor is yours. All right. Yeah, thank you for having us back. Um, I submitted some documents on Friday. I don't know if you had a chance to read through. Um, basically, we kind of looked at um, the proposal for three EDUs from last week, you know, based on Title V and the definition of our business being a lounge slash tavern. Um, and we just kind of looked into that a little more. Um, and really, I think we kind of got into it a little bit last uh, meeting where we talked about how our business model is technically different than a lounge slash tavern, which equates um, 20 gallons per GPDs per seat. Um, and that's because the nature of our business is, is a seasonal outdoor uh, beer garden. Um, you know, we're operating from uh, April through October. Um, there's rainy days. Uh, there's a lot of, of things that kind of make it different than a year round indoor place um, and therefore would require less GPDs per seat. Um, so we did some research and found that there is a precedence for this type of business model. Um, and I put that in the documents. There's actually, it's the commercial standards um, from Suffolk County uh, up in New York. And they uh, kind of looked at all of those reasonings behind how a beer garden is different than a, a standard you know, indoor uh, venue. And they equated 7.5 GPDs per seat. Um, so we kind of used that as the baseline for our recommendation for EDUs. Uh, we have 60 seats, which is also in the documents. Um, we, so that would be exactly um, 450 gallons per day, um, which is one EDU. Um, so that is kind of our baseline. And then we said, well, our, our hours of operation are also kind of truncated. We're, we're not operating at a full standard um, beer garden, garden business model, just because we are in the heart of Cohasset, we understand that it's, you know, kind of a quieter community. So our hours kind of reflect that. And based on that, I, we did some research on surrounding um, beer garden hours that are in the Boston area and in the state. And we're about 75% of those hours. Um, so with that rationale, we said 75% of one EDU when it's, you know, a typical beer garden um, would be 75% uh, of 37,000, which is around 28,000. So we'd like to propose that as kind of a countermeasure to um, the 112,000 fee that was discussed last meeting. And we're, we're definitely open to talking through that more. I know I went through that kind of quickly, um, but that was kind and that was just based on continuing the conversation that we had last meeting 
where we talked about the differences between our business model and kind of the lounge slash tavern, 20 GPDs per seat. So, you know, with that, I guess I can open it up and unless Ryan, unless you want to add anything um, that I missed. Nope, I think you covered it all. Thanks. Um, I've got two questions. What, did you say that you got the, the regulations uh, from New, the state of New York? I did, yes. So the, the state of New York, and I posted that in the, um, I sent those, that file, the exact file that I pulled from. What about Massachusetts? Have you looked at Massachusetts? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I looked at Massachusetts and then there's nothing in that I could find um, or that our engineer team could find that was, uh, you know, assessed to a, a beer garden. Um, it's an, an outdoor seasonal beer garden at that. So the closest thing I could find was New York and their 7.5 designation for an outdoor seasonal beer garden. Okay. Um, so you have 60 seats, is that correct? Yes. Are you going to prohibit, and I'm, I'm going to say this is kind of a backward area, so I don't mean to be harsh. Are you going to prohibit people from standing? No, no. Um, we won't prohibit people from standing. Um, that's that's not our intention. Well, our... I guess, yeah, I, it sounds to me like you, you probably, and I would hope you have it, um, you probably are going to have more than 60 customers at a time. Yeah, we, we do hope to. Um, we understand that there's going to be families and, you know, uh, certainly kit children. Um, so they might not necessarily be able to sit down. Um, and, you know, that's another aspect of it is, is the fact that there are kids who count towards the capacity, but don't necessarily have the same water usage as, as an adult would, um, you know, as frequency of bathrooms and whatnot. So anyways, yeah, so that's, that's kind of our, our thought there. So um, the only comments I, um, I can make here is that um, I certainly appreciate your uh, researching and trying to see how you could kind of mitigate the, the cost. But, you know, we're regulated by Title V um, and it says 10 EDUs, um, I believe. Um, I'm going to call it back up again. And they... Um, they had a section for seasonal or you know snack shack type of things, um, but I think their EDUs were about the same. Um, I'd have to go back through the Title V again just to. I, I try to figure out where you could fit. Um, they all seem to be about um, the same. I don't know, ten. Um, I, I couldn't. I couldn't find where you would fit into something that would be uh, smaller, you know. Um, they have country club snack bar or lunchroom, you know, or country club lockers and showers. Um, there was a kind of a, a country club dining room where um, those are all kind of at 10 EDUs if you were trying to establish a size equivalent to what you are going to be to other things in Title V, other than just a straight restaurant. Um, so um, they did have fast food ones um, in straight restaurants. I don't know that you're you could be considered fast food, um, but we, we'd have to take a look at the what Title V is because that's what we're required to go by. Um, Understood. And, and the, that the other thing is we don't, you know, our fees are based on um, the Title V and, and what your seating is it's, it's not based on what percentage of operation hours you are it doesn't it doesn't go by that at all right and i i get that i guess that's yeah. my my rationale and my thinking was because there isn't a close equivalent in title five how can we take title five and use that as our as our you know baseline and, and use that in accordance with with what we're doing here and make it more appropriate for our business model. So that was my thinking, um, you know. Is, the only thing we can do is find- It isn't um, really explicitly said, the, the business. Yeah, if, um, if we could um, see if there's any subcategories uh, within Title V um, that are maybe published on the state's website um, that have been, you know, 
updated over time uh, than when this was originally published. Uh, these are kind of like uh, general categories. Um, so they may have maybe some subcategories under that. I'm not sure. Um, uh, certainly, um, it's something we could look into. Um, I, I, like, I like the way you're going, Paul, but maybe we should ask the applicants to look into it. You know, so the, yeah, can... yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I, I just know that, you know, we have to go by Title V. Um, and the question is, what, where can you argue you fit um, in that category? So uh, certainly, um, times changed over the last five or 10 years in the in the restaurant business. So perhaps you could contact the state to find out if there's a subcategory to one of the main categories now. Okay, yeah, seems fair. And Dan, uh, uh, speak for a minute over what he might think. Sure. sure. Um, um, how you doing? Hopefully I'm not lagging too much here. We had a little technology issue today, but um, essentially it's 20 gallons you know, per day per seat under the, the general category of a, of a cabin or, or that type of, uh, you know, small leaving establishment. Um, there are some provisions in Title V that allow you to um, adjust that number. Uh, if there's not a category that, you know, approximately fits the use that is intended. Uh, in terms of, of what the applicant can do, and we have done this on a cu couple of occasions in the past, is um, you know, come in with water use data from similar facilities, and we can, we can try to utilize that. And that would be like an annual water use from a sim similar facility. I don't know, um, you know, it sounds like this might be your first enterprise with this type of facility, but if you did find something in New York, even, um, you know, actual water consumption data um, would actually be helpful. Um, and that might help to establish um, where it is. And typically what we do is we would double that flow for the calculation of the, of, of the flow per, uh, you know, for design purposes. Um, but sometimes that does work in, in the applicant's favor if he can demonstrate that type of information. Um, it is a seasonal facility, so you can give a little bit of credit for that. Um, diminished hours of operation could potentially be considered if it's significant, but Generally, the best way to go about it is to try to get flows from an existing facility of a similar type. I guess there's, there's, there's plenty in Massachusetts to be able to get that from. I know there's a lot, there's a lot of beer gardens up in Somerville. Hmm. So there, there are plenty around. Um, I don't even know if you want to consider the salt house as uh, something equivalent. Uh, the one in uh, the uh, oyster place in Duxbury has a beer yeah. garden that operates during the summer. Yeah. I'll have the, porta potties. So I'm not. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think they have porta potties. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I, I was kind of thinking, I don't know, it, wouldn't it be the same kind of thing? Because the state of New York, using the 7.5, they obviously base that off of water usage. So wouldn't yeah, that data typically like? Didn't we already do, do that? Yeah, but uh, if we go back to what Paul said, I mean, we're, yeah. we're, we're we have to be Title V compliant. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would, okay. um, I yeah, so. yeah. You're, you're, we're best using um, examples from in state. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can contact uh, to see if there's any any additional subcategories, and then look for water usage data. And it sounds like we'll have to come back and probably have this conversation again in two weeks or um, is that kind of the course of action you'd recommend? You can try, yeah. you can try the music circus. You can try um, the Cape Cod Melody tent. You, you know, those, those two venues are um, basically, uh, you know, beer <laughs> gardens, if you will, uh, for a venue. Um, and um, they're operating probably six months out of the year where you're operating nine. Um, so well, maybe we're gonna that be, might be We're going to be six months for the most part. I mean, it's April through October, but um, yeah, no, that's a good call. Music circus. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they, you know, they, um, it, it'd be interesting to see um, though they have a much higher capacity 
but remember their their capacity is limited to just uh, a two or three hour seating, right? Yeah. So um, if you look at their capacity per, per minute, it might be high, um, but yeah. if you but if you dilute it over the period of time, it probably would be reasonable. Yeah, I think there's a way to probably calculate it out or say how many shows yeah. every did per year or season. Right, right. Figure that out. Okay. No, that's yeah. a good. Okay, I can I can collect that data and then um, submit it to you all. And will we have to do another call then uh, in two weeks or? Yes, please. All right, and that's what we'll do. Is there any any more discussion about um, how this would be tied into the manhole or or anything like that, or whether or not it has to be located in some fashion? Um. Not from our no no real updates. Rosano Davis is currently putting together the exact plan and putting together a quote for us. So they'll have more information, but they think it's pretty straightforward. So I'll be able to, to supply you guys with that as well. Good. Very good. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So drain layers license? Yes. So I put this, um, wanted to talk about this uh, for uh, renewal for drain layer licenses. In March, um, you voted to increase the drain layer license from 200 to 1,000 for the year. And um, getting a little bit of pushback from um, drain layers and did a little bit of digging on what other towns charge. And this is all in the email that I sent on Friday, which has, uh, let's see. I thought, maybe not. No, it is, I, I've got it, I printed it out. It, 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 you had an agenda and then you had the, the email. So you're talking that we're, we're doing a thousand for the annual licensing fee um, and your question was whether or not it includes renewal, because renewal in, if you don't mind reading it, Situate is $25, Marshfield's $25, Hall's $100, Hingham's $200. So you go through and give us all the different towns surrounding us, basically. Yes. So are we keeping at, at 1,000 for initial and for renewals for the drain layers? I mean, I could see potentially lowering, if they, if they paid $1,000, you know, lowering it to some number, you know, maybe 150 or 200, whatever, something like that. I, I propose a percentage um, uh, of, say, 25% of whatever the renewal fee is. I mean, whatever the initial fee is. So that would put it right at 250. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, because right. if we if we raise the rates in the future, it'll always be tied to a percentage of the rate. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Wayne? Yes, I go I go along with that. Yeah. Okay. So for the ones that have been have been um, have already have Rainway licenses. Do they still have to pay the thousand, or is like say Rosanna Davis and Iaia Brothers? They've been drainway a license. They've always renewed their licenses, so we don't. So they'll just pay the two fifty, correct? Right. Right. Okay. This, okay. The one thousand. The one thousand would apply to somebody new to the new. So to the brand town. new ones, or that haven't been. Um, haven't had a license in say a year or more, right? They would yeah. be new. Yeah, if it's beyond if it's beyond a twelve month expiration. Okay. Lisa, how many people have licenses now? Did I miss that? We have. Um, I think it's nine on our list right now from last year. But I haven't. Um, I've been kind of working a little bit with each one on renewals. There was one that renewed um, in November, but that was Cease Burrito. 
he was on there last year. So that kind of falls into the category that we're talking about. But I'll have to check okay. to make sure. And so a, a new license is $1,000. The annual renewal is 25% of that fee. Okay. And a new license um, would have to apply for anything that expired greater than 12 months. So say they don't renew and, okay, so greater than 12 months. All right. Yeah. So they renew okay. once a year, they pay 250. If they skip right. a year, then they've got to re then they've got to apply all over again. What if they come back in June and say, you know, I want to renew? That still falls under the 250 category, yes? Yeah, I would say so. I think so, yeah. Okay. Okay. If, if they let it expire for, for a year or more, then it's the thousand. Yes. So do we need do we need to vote on this, which I think we do, or do we want to just leave it at sort of an administrative thing? Administrative. Okay. And and it'd be interesting to um, we gave permission for uh, the folks down at the harbor to relocate the sewer main there, and it would be important to uh, find out who is going to do that work for them, so that in fact they get licensed to do it. Right. I haven't received an application yet for yeah. um, their sewer. Yeah, so that we came in and approved the concept and the, and the sketch and everything, or the fact that they could, they needed us to sign off in the easement so they can go ahead and move the pipe. Yeah, yeah, that was the last conversation we had. Right, so it's a matter of, um, that's not a new connection or anything, but it's working with, um, the sewer mains in the town of Cohasset, which is where I think that we want the responsibility to be with a, a contractor that's licensed. Right, Does that makes sense? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'll reach out to them. Okay, because it's, and uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, we can do capital quickly. Um, Lisa, you, you say that there are four capital items listed. I see three. Oh, oh no, I do see. I, I got the other one. Never mind. It's on the next page. That, that's fine with me. I don't know. you guys have any comment on them? No, I just wanted to make sure that um, I think uh, when Don and I uh, and Lisa talked before, we we wanted to know. And I, I still don't know if, if maybe Brian heard or not, but we are still waiting to find out if there's any capital improvements that have to be done to the Tupelo station for when CJC hooks up, and then if there's any capital improvement that had to be done at Deer Hill, as we wanted to get an article on the warrant to cover that. My understanding is that that. Anything that has to happen with CJC is paid for by CJC. And, and I would think likely if it's something that we've talked to with uh, Jane that if, if except, we have to make except, some update. But yeah, there was a, to, um, yeah, they were reviewing it because it failed and um, to pump the, uh, the septic into the gentleman's basement. So they were doing assessment back on that. Oh, that was, yeah, and we hadn't signed the agreement yet before that, right? Before that right. happened. Okay, so that's a different yeah. occurrence. Okay, but yeah, I, so I would... they didn't give us any any feedback on it. I know Dan worked with them on it uh, briefly, but I thought they were going to put something in writing to us for both. Yeah, it, I'm still anticipating that that's going to be received soon. I talked to Scott again, and he says they did receive a quote back from Hayes. Um, Wood and Curran uh, wasn't going to be doing the work. They asked Hayes to put together a quote, but I have yet to see that. But okay. I understand it is in. Uh, all right, Lisa. So um, is that different than what we have um, on the, um, we have one for pump station rehabilitation on the capital items right now. Is uh, this something different than? It, it should be Tupelo, unless there's another pumping station we haven't heard about. No, and then anything that was going to happen to the Deer Hill would be under the, the Cook Estate cost. We wouldn't deal with it. And we, yeah, we actually, I think two meetings ago, we actually discussed that with Jane and with um, uh, Tom Flannery. Right, that's pumping station is working fine. So there shouldn't be any issues. We just wanted them to evaluate if it needed any upgrades, Cook would have to pay for that upgrade. Correct, yep. 
So my only concern is, do we need an article in the warrant to fix Tupelo before CJC hooks into it? And if I, I would think that's normal maintenance and stuff. It's really, okay. I mean, we don't, we've done more with the plant and stuff than that encompasses and we haven't needed to go before town meeting for, okay. for that, right? Yeah, I agree. I think we just do it, so. Uh, can I find out how you guys are funding your capital plan? We thought you were doing it. All right, yeah. I it's, it's always a great assumption. Uh, this is the first time I'm, I'm seeing it. So I don't know how you're proposing. I'm assuming retain earnings. I just want to be clear on. So I see grit screw replacement, 75 grand. I'm assuming that that wouldn't incur and factored in uh, installation cost into this. Because I remember the last number being somewhere around 40 grand. I hope that's correct, right? Uh, well, we've already, have we already bought it, right? We already the grit screw is either on its way or were something, right? Well, you have 75 grand on a capital item, so I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Brian, have we seen, are you familiar? I think we, I think we have, I think we've ordered it. Yeah. I think I think what you, um, you're talking about the sieve drum thickener versus the grit screw, two different items. Um, yeah, I haven't heard have, anything on a grit screw. Grit screw is um, still pending. It, it, Needs to be assessed and quoted. Uh, I'll be right, right. Sludge, yeah. oh. So I and I repairs, pipe and manhole repairs, a um, hundred grand. Now we still have one hundred nineteen thousand left from the I and I account before. So are we going to town meeting for another hundred in addition to the hundred we still have available? No, I think um, you know we have always been counseled either by the capital committee or whoever asked us to do this to put what we think we're going to need this year. So that's no, what that. No, no, no. We go to town meeting for only what we need funding for. So if we have a hundred grand, this has been previously approved. We don't need to go down to town meeting for another hundred grand. I agree. All right. Yeah. The question is, are we, are we going to incur those capital expenses? Um, if all the items have been purchased and are, are they in? I and I, again, so this is, this is an account <laughs> yeah. uh, approved back in 2006. So why the money is still out there, I don't really know, but I've been urging the committee, any I and I to just be spent out of this until, until it's gone. Spent, yeah. Until it's spent down. Um, last year we, we did, I think it looks like we got a, PLO did a contract with Wood and Curran to install some I and I detection hardware and software, which was paid from a different category. But so we have 100, almost 120 grand for I and I. I don't think, unless you're anticipating us spending more than 100 next year, I don't think we need to go to town meeting for another 100. But again, that's not my. I'm just telling you, we have the 120 available. If we right. need to go to town meeting, I'd be happy to support and talk to and support it. But I just want to make sure we're not going out asking for more money that's just going to sit in an account and again trying to reduce administrative headache on everybody's part. Yeah, so what you know, capital budget asked us um, to put together you know a five year projection of spending, right, or capital needs, and that's that's what that was. So, okay, I, I think at this point um, uh, that was just a forecast, and it's something that um, is not needed. So, and, and so I'm seeing 15,000 for pump rehab, pump station rehab. It, it could be too below. I, you know, like I said, I, I haven't heard from them. Uh, yeah, we don't know what that cost is, so I don't know. Brian, do you know where the 15? Uh, I've, I've sent an email in the last week to Rob and Scott um, on the assessment for Tupelo and Dare Hill, and, and I haven't gotten a response yet, so. I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to him again after this meeting. And then on the South Main Street sewer, uh, 3 million and 23 and 2.4 and 24. I'm trying to understand this a little bit more because uh, it, it talks about SRF funding and betterment funding. Could somebody again, just explain again, what, what, we're, what we're doing here? Again, as Paul um, said with our 
what the capital committee has asked for us, we're putting in a prognostication of what we think it may cost if we do it. Okay, and are we expect, we're, so we're expecting to go to town meeting with a plan Probably no, no. Well, th th there's a whole lot of other factors involved in this thing, and I think some of it may come out during the select board meeting tonight. But um, if if there is a connection to North Situate, uh, whether we sewer South Main or not, they would pay for that. Who would pay for that? S Situate. Meaning what? They would pay for the line to go from North Situate to our treatment plant. Yep not connect any houses on no they wouldn't connect the houses no 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 but they would pick, they would they would pick up the main piece and, the, and that's why this is just a prognostication because we, we don't even know if it's going to happen or not that would have to go to town meeting because it's right. going to be an i guess my thought season. is instead of bring, if we're going to srf funding they want to see the project as a whole be approved so to break it up to two different years if we if we if there is cost and, and there's a potential of 5.4 million on us, we should probably put the whole 5.4. Again, I, and I don't know, I don't know when, if this, if all your issues got ironed out and were approved to go to town meeting, if we're trying to get this done, SRF funding requires a project to be approved at town meeting for us to submit to SRF. And there's a time frame and a lag on when things get approved. So. I just want to make sure everybody understands. No, oh, I think we do, and hence the prognostication part of this thing. I mean, you know, I think we're, we're I think we're at least another year away. You're, yeah. So, so we're just focused on the fiscal twenty three budget, right? So that'll take us from uh, July one of twenty twenty two to June of twenty twenty three. So that that's that's our focus for today, right? So, um, I don't see South Main Street um, in in that pile. Um, there's no way we can make a decision by May, no, a comprehensive no. one. Um, so that, that, that brings us past town meeting. So now we go into July one, um, and, and we work out, um, whatever the arrangement is for any, um, large scale sewer system. And that would put us, um, into May of, uh, 2023 decision-making process. And then that funding would be in fiscal year 24. Okay, so just so you know, town meeting is required to approve the project before we go to SRF. Then Correct. there is a, a significant lead time from application to notification from SRF if you get the funding. I just want to make sure you're aware of that when you're... It'll, it'll take us FY23 to, to, to get that plan worked out and get to a town meeting in May of 23. Okay. And if it's approved then, then you can start your process. Ryan, why don't you, you've got a hand raised up there. He's on mute. Oh. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I just wanted to um, underscore the importance of South Main decision only because uh, three years ago, we had South Main Street on our 20-year road repavement plan. And if you guys drive South Main at all, uh, or I encourage you to, it's it needs to be paved now. Um, and we encourage National Grid to get their work done, which they have uh, a couple of years ago. And the only outstanding utility that needs to be upgraded out there is, is it sewered or not? Um, and just to boil the decision down to a Cohasset decision, uh, you know, the difference between regionalization and not regionalization is probably just uh, a nominal diameter increase down the street. I don't think it would change the alignment or or the cost all that much for Cohasset. So if you can make the decision on are we going to sewer our South Main Street um, section, then I, I just want to... Um, you know, put some importance on it that it needs to be done shortly or the town's going to be doing a lot of repairs, just temporary repairs at a, at a pretty big cost just to keep the road drivable. When, when is the road going to be repaved? Two years ago. Oh, two years what, ago. What's yeah, the so I mean, say if you, if you were lay, ideally, you know, we'd want to upgrade the utilities this year and pave next year. Uh, but if you're talking about a year of deliberation and then, you know, the, a year of design and also the um you know we passed around the 
the concept design and cost estimate from E1, which was around 7 million, not the 5.4. So I think the ticket's gonna be a little bit bigger. And I think, I just wanna underscore that the importance to make a decision soon. Um, right. What, what, what's the cost going to be to, to uh, coal plane it and pave it now? South Main Street, what you want to do? Um, I'll email that out after. It'll take me a little while to track down. The, uh, it's a couple of years old, the, uh, the estimate I have, but it's, like it's decent enough for budgeting oh. purpose. But if we say if we did it and then you'd have to redo it under the, under the utility. Yeah, but around $200,000? No, more money. More um, money. Yeah, you. I'm just just in general. We're probably talking about, um, you know, five hundred thousand a mile, and that, that's that's probably uh, doesn't include a lot of structures. So, I'll, I'll take a look at. I'll I'll send the budget estimate I have. That's probably a couple of years old, but that's you know that's the liability there. We we can't wait too long to pave it. Yeah. Um, and I just want to underscore that it's important to make a decision at least for the Cohasset. It, irrespective of the regionalization, you know, we can make a decision. I think we have enough information on do we want to sewer the Cohasset side or not. Mm -hmm. And the difference between regionalization is not uh, is probably just an increase of the pipe diameter um, going to the line. All right. So I, I just need some clarification. You want us to make a decision on sewering South Main so that you could budget paving South Main after it's done? No, I'm, I'm all budgeted. I'm ready to go. It's just you on upgrading your utility. So the way we pave our roads, we have a 20 year road plan. We try to pave every road at least every 20 years. The main thoroughfare yep. is probably a little sooner, but prior to that, you get all the utilities upgraded because once we pave it, there's a five year strict, no excavation moratorium on the road. So we have a, a clean road for at least five years. Then we have extra protections up to 10 years, uh, early opening fees and such. From 10 to 20 is usually when you're planning on repaving the road and budgeting it. So once I we mean, pave the road, we don't like to touch it for at least 10 years. I mean, if we said yesterday, it's going to be at least another year and a half before it's in. Yeah, Paul, I think your schedule was pretty right. I don't think you're going to see a shovel in the ground until 2024. Yeah. So all I'm saying is to not I, delay I, decision would would be beneficial. Yeah, yeah I don't I, I don't disagree with you. I just um, I don't paving the road to force us into a decision with something of this magnitude. And th that's a fair, um, yeah. so, but at some point it's gonna get to where we'll just have to pave the road and maybe when it gets dug up again, it'll get fully repaved again by by the project. Yeah, uh, right, right. And, and that that liability, I'll get you the cost estimate from from Edwards, that's a couple of years old on what it is. Right, but can't, can't you- five or 600. Yeah. Brian, can't you consider like the after Beachwood Street headed to North Situate, it looked like the gas company just put a, you know, a single line down. It didn't look like they put all new cross going across the street and stuff like that. But can't you just go ahead and, and coal plane certain areas and then put a top coat on it and then let that last two or three or four years? And then this this would do the the, the right job would be done after the sewer's done. So you could rebuild the manholes, the drainage manholes and things like that, if you had to. Uh, I don't, you know. No, no, that's, yeah, trench repair is a, is a possibility. It's just, um, I'm saying that without utility, ideally you'd want to get utilities done and then do the paving ones. But anything that gets done now is going to be a temporary. Yeah, that's, and I yeah. think that's what I would recommend you do. And then the, the burden of the full job is going to be on the sewer versus even on that, you know, the 500,000 of, sort of that money can be put to put the road back in the proper condition when we're done. Because there's a lot of ledge and stuff in that area and stuff. So we're gonna, you know, there'll be some pretty pretty wide trenches in some cases. I'd even say that, you know, you'd wanna probably let it over winter too. So, I mean, basically uh, Brian can come back in following the project with the full, full project. Right, but we yeah. can include that in the, fund, in the funding. So, so let's say we had everything done, you know, you made a decision, you had the funding, everything is in place, you laid the sewer over the next year, Dan's right, you know, we, what we do is we usually wait one season for settlement, mm -hmm. then we go back in. Um, so I, I'm just kind of laying out the time frame on what it takes to pave and by delaying any kind of decision, it just, 
it just makes it further out. But so is, is I think it beat that for us. So yeah. I'll send you the uh, cost estimates and, and we'll look at more cost estimates of maybe just trench repair or getting the, the bad sections. It's not just the trenches, there's some delamination in some section of, of just the original pavement um, out there too. So thanks. Okay. So basically, uh, Don, I don't think we have anything on the capital needs um, that need to go on, the, on the, an article. I wouldn't more. send this to. I wouldn't send it to capital then. If we yeah. don't need it, yeah, it's just going to confuse the process, honestly. Right, right. Um, and and I know you guys are trying to wrap up, but I do have a couple quick updates I'd like to get about some other projects we've approved. The sludge, the rotary sludge thickener, the two hundred thousand dollars. Have we? Where are we with that project? Uh, have we already bid it and quote, given the green light? And I don't know. Yeah, Lisa, I think the last time you told me they uh, they have awarded it. Um, I think that that has been ordered, but let, I'll um I'll follow up with Rob and Scott and um send to everybody an email. What right. Where that is. And then barn doors. I know we've had terrible time trying to get barn doors for this place. Yeah. Any closer, any idea? Again, we have the money put aside from another capital account we've had out there. I uh, just wonder if we've had any clarity, any anybody that, that has offered to uh, do the work, not for free, obviously, but to actually contract with mm -hmm. us to, to do that. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I know they've tried several times. Yeah. What, what amount are you carrying? What amount are you carrying for that? I'm carrying a forty thousand dollar number. Okay. And I think that was like an estimate from a year or so ago. Yeah. Um, and then I believe the update to the SCADA system is complete at this point. But we also talked about there was another component I think that was linking up to pump station. Uh, I have it in my notes as a mission system telemetry solution. Um, right. And we were we were we were carrying a number of about twenty five grand. And I believe we, we got that we got that through the savings that we had with the actual membrane replacement. So we budgeted more than we actually spent. It's coming out of that account. Just wondering if we've done anything yet with it. Yeah, no, it's been done. I know the SCADA system's in. I've seen it. And I believe yeah. they have a, something at the uh, on Pond Street at the pump station there. They had some sort of a telemetry, some sort of a, a, a data capture and transmission system there. What it is, I don't know. Lisa, can you confirm that? Because I... Sure. Again, based on the amount that they quoted us originally for, for the SCADA system plus this, it doesn't look like we've done it based on the expense, unless, unless it was paid out of somewhere else. But um, if you could just confirm that, because then, again, that frees up 25 grand that I have sitting kind of held aside for, for something else. Um, I don't think the mission's in place at this point in time. I think they did their SCADA upgrades, but uh, I would say there's still some room for... Um, additional skater upgrades at the plant. Okay. Um, so I think that money is still pending. Okay. Uh, that's, that's all I had for I just wanted to see where we were with some of these projects. Do you so, have so the, are, um, oh, there was um, something that came through. There was a quote that uh, uh, Scott Papa sent uh, regarding a roof repair. And he was going to get a couple more quotes. It was about sixty-five thousand, I believe, it came in at. Uh, are you yeah. talking to me or the commission? Ah, uh, gone you. I don't see any. Uh, this is the first I'm hearing of it. I see on your ten-year plan, you have something in 2022 for for twelve grand, but um, I have no idea what, what you're referring to about sixty-five thousand. And what, just a clarification too, on this 10 year plan, what capital is looking for are your, your, essentially what you're planning to ask at town meeting for the next 10 years. So if we have the money already set aside, they're not looking to see that we're spending, how we're spending, they're, they're looking for what we're projecting for asks at town meeting. So like, just for instance, that $100,000 for I and I, we already have the hundred. They weren't, they wouldn't be looking for unless we're asking for another hundred, they wouldn't be looking to see that we have a hundred thousand in 2020. 
Okay. So, all right, Lisa, if you could just let, let me know, we can kind of work on, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 65 grand. I don't know where we're going to pay for that at this moment. Um, let us know what it's would have to go on to a uh, town meeting warrant, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. So, right now we have um, no capital expenses uh, related to any pump upgrades because we haven't heard from, from them. Um, I don't know if that would be covered in that I and I budget or not, um, since it did uh, cause a problem during a storm and and um, fail. Um, it could theoretically come out of that I and I budget. So then the only capital expense we would have for this fiscal year would be the sixty five thousand dollar roof repair. Uh, yeah. the, grit, the, grit, well. the grit the grit screw replacement as well. And and yeah, and possibly mission. But the mission we already have the money for. Okay. We already have the money for that. I just refine. If we need money, I, I leave the I and I alone. If there's an issue with pump station rehab. Let's just put a, an article out there. Um, but that's I just want to be clear. Yep. This is why we just I, I need a clear. If you want my help to kind of figure out how we we're, we're paying for this stuff and, and the the funding, I kind of need a good a good idea of what we need. Yeah, so I, I, the problem we have is um, it, it appears that Woodard is the one that hasn't given us the answers for these items okay. uh, that we're waiting on. So you know, we have no idea if they finish the skater project. We have no idea about the barn door thing still out there. The sludge thickener, we don't know. The upgrade to Tupelo, we don't know. We don't have a final cost on a roof repair. They've got one quote for 65000 Okay, so I mean, we have some time until town meeting and... Uh, you know, going through capital, giving them the request for town meeting. Maybe, maybe it would be beneficial to have Wooden give an update. Uh, it could be email. It yeah. could be maybe not a meeting, but yeah. I think having them give a clear update on where they are with these these items that the commission and town meeting has approved, um, I think would be beneficial for everybody. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So, do we have a? Is there a primary contact for Woodard that we have, uh, Brian or Lisa, that is specific to the administrative side? Maybe not Scott or it, it be Rob. Rob. Rob Scott's the project manager, and, and Scott's the uh, operator. So Rob's going to call me in a little bit. We've just been texting. Um, okay. But yeah, I, I agree with Don. You should probably put them as an agenda item, just update, and then they can uh, go go yeah. through the process. And, and in the interim of the, between now and the next meeting, we can talk about. Uh, what projects they're going to update on. We, we did that about a month ago and he hasn't responded to us. Yeah. So Rob's the, uh, the point of contact. Yeah. Scott's obviously. Yeah, like I said, I, I think they just got in the Hayes quote for the pumping station. Okay. Um, more than likely it's more than 15,000 though. So you have to, we have to get a handle on that. The sieve drum thickener though, I believe that was um, bid through the town as a regular procurement item. item. So, um, I don't think Wood and Cover would have an update on that only if they found out from the, the town where that's at. From what, what I understand, basically, it was bid, and I believe it was also awarded, uh, which would mean an order was placed. But I think Lisa can uh, confirm that. What was that, Dan? On um, which piece? Sludge thickener. The sludge sludge thickener. thickener. Yeah. Ask Michelle on that. She, she's yeah. the one that did it. Yeah, Michelle should be in charge. Yeah, I'll talk to Lisa and Brown offline. I, we, we still, even if we have procurement help us, right? It's still a sewer oversight, right? So somebody, whether it's Commission Brown, we just need to make sure we have good handle on what these projects are that we're approving. I agree, Don. Yep. All right, can we go on Thank to, you. are we all set this? Yeah. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. All right, I think our last piece of business, actually, I have, I have an update I want to give the board to, but quickly, I think we can do this abatement um, on Hull Street. Yes. So um, 75 Hull Street uh, was confirmed that they were never connected to sewer. However, they have been billed um, since 2016 uh, as using sewer. And um, their bills were, they, they have um, aquarium water at the time, now it's Ware River. But um, those 
those readings would be sent to the um, Cohasset Water Department and sewer would be, would be billed on that water consumption. And so August and um, November bills have not been paid yet. So I was requesting an abatement for the 284.74 um, to take that off the bill. And then um, the reimbursement part for all, all the, um, the bills that he did pay, which add up to be $7,449.27. These, um, this also included the 125 quarterly fee for the retrofit of um, an E1 pump that they never got either. So uh, does anyone, did, did anyone confirm that he's on a septic system and not on a sewer system? Yes. There was confirmation of that? Yes. There are um, gravity connections too on Hull Street. We should just confirm that. That he's not connected by gravity? Correct. He's, he's not connected. He did pay a full betterment though. It makes no sense to me. Why would, I mean. All right, I, I was uh, just having a side conversation. So we're, are we talking about Hull Street? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, so Lisa and I actually did a, a field visit out there um, over the summer when this question came up before, and I forget the reason why the question came up, but they were not, um, there was a, an original, um, I think an Interon pump installed on site with a panel. The panel is not powered. The pump is not active and they are still using their their old septic system out there um, at 75 Hull Street. Apparently he did pay his betterment when that project went through, which was around, you know, 1999, 2000, never connected and uh, not sure the exact reasoning why it wasn't connected, but they did install a pump and they installed you know, I, I'm assuming they installed a connection to that pump, uh, but it appears based on talking with the resident that um, the contractor who was doing the work at the time came out and said, you know, I'll, I'll do it for half price if you connect to your neighbor's, um, your neighbor's sewer line. And, uh, and apparently that maybe that was done. Um, so the line that goes to that old Interon pump may be going through the, the neighbor's property, which is, I'm sure there's, there wasn't an easement done or anything like that. Um, so what the resident would like to do is just run his own connection at his own cost out to the street and, um, and connect. He has paid his betterment and uh, he would pay for that connection. Uh, I guess the outstanding questions are, it it appears, and I'll defer to Lisa, that he has paid his these outstanding bills um, that he's looking for an abatement on. And part of that does include uh, the, uh, the sewer upgrade fee. So the question is, do we, do we owe him an E1 or, uh, or not? So what's the cost of putting it in? And then do we issue a credit of the $7,449 against it? I, that's the question I have. I don't know how this all could happen. No, this is, this is nuts, absolute craziness. But we went over everybody who has pumps, who doesn't have pumps. Would, they would have been recognized as having one that should have been upgraded. Is it on the upgrade list? Where's, where's, all, where's the information for this? Seems to me he would have brought it to our attention in the last five years if he was paying for sewer all this time. Yeah, I know. And why pay $7,500 to somebody that you don't have any connection to? I mean. So I think the mechanism of his payment was his mortgage, um, his taxes were paid on escrow and he got the sewer bill, ignored the sewer bill. It then became a lien, which then gets paid through your tax. Uh, wow. Oh, your taxes yeah. at the end of the year. So I think yeah. the mechanism of his payment was basically a lien through his escrow, you know, which isn't like a- Right, so he didn't have visibility to the direct billing. But it wouldn't went, that come up every year? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm just telling you the, 
the information we got when we talked to the resident, uh, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have come five years ago and said, what's the deal with this sewer bill? Yeah, and, and, and Lisa, do we know that he actually paid $7,400 to us? Uh, yes. Uh, that was in the packet, I believe, um, in the email. What was the 400? Well, the 284 was the abatement he's looking for. And no, um, so um, I'm sorry, Bill. No, the 28474 has not been paid yet um, because his, um, his taxes for the year have not been paid. Once he gets his taxes for the year, that'll be leaned on, um, on it. So then it'll be paid it'll be paid. Right, but he's looking like, like somebody coming in and wanting a water abatement for water that, that, that didn't go through the sewer. He's looking for an abatement on a bill for $284, right? right. He wants that bill taken away and then he wants right. a credit of $7,500. Yeah. Did he own it the entire time or he or she? Yeah, that, it's Mr. Ma Emanuelo. Yeah. Have you taken them off the rolls for sewer? Pardon me? Have you taken them off the roll of sewer? Yes. Okay. So there won't be any more billing going to them? No more billing. Okay. But they're going to be connecting. And I think what, what Brian said was interesting is you've got an old pump there now. And are you going to change that if he's putting a new line in? Now, I think there was a, a death in the family there. And I don't know if this might be cleaning up an estate type of thing, and then they're going to go sell it. Therefore, they want a new connection um, or have, have their own connection. Um, uh -huh. but, but in any case, how long do we go back? When we went on Lily Pond Lane, we tried to collect people that were on sewer that had never gotten a bill. It was almost impossible to get that money from them. And we should have now given them all their stuff back. The opposite. Well, ugh. so we can. I can find out how much a um, E one pump is, and um, I believe it was like I don't. I want to say a little over five thousand. Um, since he they did he was paying also that the one twenty five per quarter up for the upgrade. Yeah, but didn't, weren't we paying Rosano Davis like eight thousand dollars each to change them out? With the oh, pump? yeah, maybe that's what it was. That, that's including the panel and everything else, right? But, right, right, right. But isn't that what need. Yeah. well? He's yeah. going to need that, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, do we give him? <laughs> do we get a, if we give him that stuff now? Do we get a credit for it because it's brand new? But they, he's already paid the hundred and twenty-five dollars for it. Let's see. So this is you know, we're looking at. He's also asking to hook up to sewer now at this point too, right? Um, not yet. He will be though. I haven't received um his application yet. Is it, at least is anyone living in his house? Yes, he is. I think his wife just passed away recently. Oh. That's what I was mentioning. Yeah. So um. So if he's going to hook up to sewer, is there a privilege and hookup fee that's going to be due? No, because he paid a betterment. He's paid a betterment already. Okay. So the only cost to us is going to be putting a new pump in, Wayne? I think. I mean, if, if we do it, maybe the pump that's there is okay, and we, we say you're responsible for that. Well, yeah. Well, because he's going to own the pump, right? Because we just, it's a grinder pump. Right. So he has to own the grinder pump. He owns the one he has now. Right. It has to be replaced. Well, yeah, because he was paying the betterment. I mean, he was paying the retrofit. Yeah. But it wasn't being used. So is it potentially in good shape or is it? Yeah, I know that's what, what gets me. If he's got a brand new pump or like a relatively new pump, why doesn't he just use that? Hook up to the sewer and that's it? I don't know. So then we would, we would credit him I as think we have, I, we abate his bill and credit him seventy four forty nine when he hooks up the sewer. Well, I think he wants it done now, but 
I should note that uh, I think 81 was on our list to retain the easement because that was a shared easement. I'm pretty sure he still has rights to connect up and that pipe is still there um, relative to his connection to the street. The chest is pumps not activated. So is his pump just sitting there in a box or is the pump installed with not going anywhere? Pumps, um, the pump would, would have originally been installed, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and the connection was all the way through, through his neighbor's property to the street. Mm -hmm. That was the original construction. And he, it appears, never connected or never connected his um, septic line to the pump, pump unit. Okay. And uh, I, I don't know how this slipped through the E1 upgrade part, but, um, you know, we just need to double check to make sure that that wasn't paid for. And we're sure that it's, it's a, it's, it is, um, it is in, in an interon pump. Brian. Uh, yeah. It yeah. Would be yeah. It's an older uh, style interon pump. Okay. Uh, in, it wasn't powered. I didn't power it or try to run or anything like that. So I mean, uh, and Dan, you're saying that there there is an easement. Uh, yeah, there should be an easement because that was one of the shared connections that was granted to the commission. And then when we were doing the releases, we we uh, listed that as one of the ones not to release. So it still should be in place. And that should be able to be found on the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds, like a title search. Um, I'm not sure how much documentation Lisa might have gotten from Rod Hoffman on that, but um, it should, you know, those are sometimes hard to, hard to locate, but that's where it should be recorded, obviously. Well, doesn't, Lisa should have copies of every one, of every easement, right? Lisa that's what should, I'm not sure but she about. doesn't. Yeah, I'm not sure what you, what you got from Rod. No, I didn't get anything from Rod. Yeah. Hey, did he did he ever sign? Remember we we signed all of those uh, grinder pump release. Did, did he sign his? No, he didn't have one because but he, he has wasn't a grinder connected. Pump. He wasn't connected. You were billing him. <laughs> I so, know. Yeah. So we were billing him, and he has a grinder pump. Yeah. Now, how come it? How come it's only 2016? Because the, that, this would have gone back 15 years or so, right? Yeah, betterment's 20 years, right? So he, he paid the betterment off in 1999, which is the 20 year betterment. I think in 16, there was some sort of investigation by the commission or something on, uh, on uh, maybe an audit of billing and who's who's connected, who's not connected, and it appears that he started getting billed in 2016. Oh, yeah, I mean, okay. Back then, it would have been based upon an inspection, I think, by uh, Wooden and Karen, though. So I'm, I'm surprised that he's still not connected here. I, yeah, but, I thought Wooden and Karen. When, when did they come on? I think they were going out with Lisa. Is that correct, Lisa? On some of these ones on House Street? Um, yeah, Rob, uh, Scott came out with me um, to House Street as well as Brian. Yeah. Right, but from the outside of the Not house. Not in 2016, though. That was just last year. From the outside, you would assume that it's it's on and working. If there's, you know, it was, um, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have gone inside the house and checked it see if the pipe actually went to it. Correct. There's panels on the wall outside, right? And then you, you just kind of assume that it's it's a customer and they're, and, and they're using it. Right. It was only after they came to us and said, I'm not using it, that you made an in-depth inspection and said, oh yeah, they're not. And it's an interim pump and et cetera. But the only other thing is that that how did it get sk uh, skipped by Rosano Davis and not doing it? And did we pay it to have it done? Yeah. Another thing to sort of look at because Dan, is it on the the units to that were to be changed over? Must have been. Yeah, 
Lisa, you have that list, right? I do. And it was on the list. And it was on the list that was questionable. And that's why we did a field visit. And it was determined that they were not connected. Okay, were not connected. We pay, should we pay Rosanna and Davis to do it? I don't think we did, but I have the records that I can, I'll check to confirm, but I'm pretty sure that it was confirmed that we did not pay, we did not pay to have that retrofitted. It wasn't on, it was on a Davis's list. Oh. So do we want to get a summary of all of this and vote on it next month or the next meeting, I mean? So it seems to me that um, he's paid $7,000 into a system he wasn't hooked up to. Right. But do we still owe him a new pump? Does well, I mean, if the other one's still working, why would we go? Well, yeah, I, I mean, other than the retrofit thing, but you know. Yeah, we, we don't, I, I don't believe so. I think if it's voted that we're going to um, reimburse him, then no. If he, if he needs a new pump, then he can purchase it on his own. Yeah. So we're basically going to give him what's there, right? Not going to well, give him anything. Yeah, we're, we're just going to we got to refund his money, and then if he hooks up the sewer, he hooks up the sewer. Right. It's the end of it. He was supposed to sign the, the those releases on the grinder pumps to where all the homeowners own the grinder pumps now and have to pay for their own maintenance on them. So he should have had, you know, he should have filled out one of those on the grinder pump. Yeah, I still have. Oh, um, I still have about 60, 60 of them that did not yeah. sign. And that, that could be a condition of getting the refund. Yeah. He's asking us to treat him as every, like everyone else and everyone else had to sign that release. Right, but he's not asking us to, um, I mean, it seems to me he's asking us to pay me for what you build that I didn't use and then the current amount. Yeah. And I don't think he's, and he says, I'm gonna connect it up now. Um, it's. It's interesting if, in fact, it's connected already to the neighbor's property, but he wants to take it from his house down to the street. And is there a connection at the street that he can go into? I think if he if he knows that there's a legal easement, a utility easement across his neighbor's property, that he would just use that. I mean, it, he would just connect, run a four inch line from his house to the grinder pump and be done with it rather than have to chip through ledge all the way out to Hull Street and make a new tap on the sewer. Right. Um, so I think that's, it's eye-opening that there's an easement and, and that if it is there and the pump station, it would be easy work to connect, you know, the, the 10 or 15 feet from his house to the pump station rather than run a brand new line out to the street. And I would only assume that he would opt for that uh, right. if it was all legal. And, that, and that's separate. And that's separate from what he's asking us to do here. Right. The the abatement is one thing, and then his intention right. to connect. Uh, I said, you know, if you do want to connect, you would need to submit an application with a plan of how you're going to connect, and whether it's the ten or fifteen feet to the existing pump station or running out to the street, that would be something that would come in with an application. I think the EDU is waived because he's already paid the full betterment, but. Um, that, that's he, he, he needs to sign that grinder pump waiver. So we can we, we can issue a, a refund on the seven thousand. Mm -hmm. and, and then we want to track but, it. But, he, but, but he's got to sign. He's got to sign the grinder pump waiver. Yeah, right. you know, it might might also be get him to come before us, see if he can explain any of this stuff. I don't. So I think he's, um, you know, he doesn't text or email or anything like that. We could always have him uh, 
come in here and sit with a mask. Uh, Smoke. Uh, or visit them at the house. That's the, you know, and just explain this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this and you, you know, you have to connect it from here to here, which you probably already know. And here's a copy of the easement. See if you could find the easement um, in the paperwork. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, you just have to take it one step at a time and just have me connect on so that he's now a, a paying customer going forward and and everything is fine and he owns it mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we don't know what his circumstances are in terms of why this is coming up now in terms of is is he going to sell the house and someone that's buying it wants their own sewer connection and wants to bigger build a house and it's going to be other house, the house we built on the easement of the existing pipe or any number of things that could be that could be out there that we don't you know we don't know yeah or his wife used to pay the bills or something and and she passed away and now he's what's this about you know oh i don't know okay are you good lisa uh yeah um right. so we'll add it to the next agenda for a vote um pending the information i dig up on east on the easement but um, since it's a since it's a um, joint easement, wasn't that exempt from being signed? Or no? Eighty-one would have been the easement that wouldn't be released. Pardon me. Eighty-one Hull Street would have been the yes. easement that would not have been released. 81 would not be the would be the one that is not released. Right. But five would be. 75. Yeah, but 75 yes. doesn't have an easement. I mean, they, they own the easement over number 81 to get to the street, right? Yeah. Right. 75 would still have an easement to the town because the town was owning those. Oh, at that point. The town to take care of. All right. So, so 75 could have been released for some reason. Okay, so I'll um, I'll look into that. Um, and the other thing I had for other business was um, the email from MassDOT requesting fifteen hundred dollar permit fee for the CJC project. I would send it to them. Yeah, they're responsible for it. Yeah. Permits. Okay. The thing is, it's made out to the town of Cohasset, the application is. So the application would have been sent to us with the bill because the state doesn't know that it's the private person that's doing the work because they wouldn't give them the permit to do it on state property at this point in time. So I think that the town pays the bill and then we can invoice reimburse him yeah. as we have done with uh, with all the other invoices, I think, Lisa. Yes. Okay. And, and Lisa, have we gotten a payment from him other than his deposit? No, not yet. Oh, surprising. Well, have I have to send him the bill still. He hasn't sent the bill yet. Oh, we haven't? No. No, I'm, I'm sending that um, today, later on today. All right. I just had right. to finalize everything. Oh. I would send, I would uh, write a separate invoice for the, the DEP one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, can I, can I, one last piece of business, um, and I've sent you guys a couple of mails. Um, I had a discussion with uh, Corey last week, um, Evans, and yes. um, well, I, I don't know whether we came to an agreement, but I mean, certainly um, the sewer board will be, uh, as we are right to be, um, uh, at the forefront of doing any kind of uh, design construction, whatever, uh, for a, a connection to uh, North Situate, and then any, and also with the uh, agreement with Hull. And um, I think a lot of, I think some of the select board were looking at the fact that the select board signed the last IMA with Hull, that they were the part of the, of the team that actually negotiated and, and, and did everything. And I said, not to my knowledge, no, I wasn't a board member then, but that, that to my knowledge was done by the sewer board. And then I, uh, it was. And then, man, and then managed and signed by not only the sewer board, but the select board and the town manager, which is, um, which would, which is what would be done uh, in this case anyway. So 
Uh, we came to an agreement on that. That's what's going to be talked about tonight at the uh, the joint meeting. So I don't I don't know if you guys can attend or not, but I'll, I'll be there. I think it's at eight o'clock. Okay, thank. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Pip, did you send all that stuff off to Greg, the attorney, and has he gotten back to us on anything? I talked to him because uh, okay. I asked him what our rights. I went back and 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 looked at Mass State Law. I looked at the. Uh, chapter 147 that was put out for us a couple of years ago, all that stuff, just to see exactly where legally where we stood. And, you know, we are what we are. I mean, we, we are an autonomous board managing a, an enterprise fund on behalf of the sewer. So, um, uh, and he, agree, he basically agreed with me. He wasn't a hundred percent up to date with it, to be honest, but he basically said, yeah, you know, you have to keep this, you have to keep the select board apprised of what you're doing, which we do. So, so yeah, I, um, my, my only my only comment on this whole thing is um, I'd, I'd like people to stop using the phrase we need to be on the same page because we're, we're you know this is the sewer commission and, and we're making decisions based on what's in the best interest of of the residents of the town and one of those interests is you know getting uh, if South Main is is what was decided um, uh, and then if there's an opportunity. Um, that allows Situate to hook up, and that's a separate decision. But it shouldn't be um, decided by groups outside of the sewer commission. No, you're right. Nope. We let them know what we're doing. <clears throat> yeah, I mean... Um, I'm one that thinks that um, the sewer, anything from Situate should be going on a dedicated line to Hull that they can, then there's no question about overloading our plant, anything like that. And it would be separate from us sewering South Main Street. And I think that it should go down the railroad bed. And when I looked at all the things on our um, uh, acts of 2013, chapter 147, it seems to imply that we have the right in Cohasset to actually go down the railroad bed um, even though I know that the railroad bed is now owned by the T um, for our purposes or other purposes. Um, and if they wanted to go down 3A, fine. If they want to go down um, the railroad bed, and I think South Main Street should be the last, the last choice of getting to Hull uh, for them. I mean, you, Wayne, you've had several great ideas on um, ways to solve their problem. I haven't seen any evidence that they've researched anything other than the $35 million run it down 3A project. So I, I don't know if they're just discounting these ideas because the path of least resistance is just to get them, get us to go down South Main. I, you know, I just, I haven't seen evidence that they've exhausted other options. Yeah, I think the only thing they've done was when we had the uh, Woodard and Curran meetings uh, in Situate, um, they were part of it. Now, whether they did anything, I don't know. Um, but I agree. I don't think they've done a whole lot. Um, and some of it could be just the fact that we sort of went stale for the past two years with this whole thing. But uh, right. which is another story. But, but I think if we can go down, you know, no, excuse me, if they can go down uh, 3A, uh, down the train line and then figure out a way to hook up. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure exactly where they would connect to Hull. Maybe go under, you're talking like go down where, where the train crosses 228 wing right there. Yeah, right there it, on Hull street. And, oh, all right. and Hingham has a pipe in Hill on Hull street and serves, you know, that area of town. I don't know. There's a, there's a couple of little subdivisions on the right hand side there. And I'm not sure whether those are sewered or not. And, and, uh, and Dan might be able to say, you know, where, where we stopped on, on Hull Street with our shared pipe going down the middle. That then gives them, you know, the line to go down Hull Street and kind of, you know, cross over and go to their plant. And we would, we would probably want to charge them a conveyance fee of some sort, maybe? Whatever, maybe, maybe we'd have a connection that we could use in an emergency or anything else that would tie into it. But, um, and Brian, you're on, what do you, you know? Yeah, so you, the uh, the Hull Street sewer ends uh, just about the property where we were just talking about 75 Hull Street. So that's at the top of the hill, just past Lambert's Lane. Um, 
and then you have I don't know maybe a quarter mile down past Glastonbury Abbey you have Fisher Road Cedar Street yeah and uh, I I think then you're at the train tracks so that that area is not on sewer it ends right there at uh, Lambert's and I think Pine Street and it's 75 Hull Street area right but that is um by not having the sewer in the street, it means that, um, and I think that's a gravity line, right? Um, down to North, Co North Cohasset. Um, the upper portion there is actually pressure where we were talking about, because it goes off of the old Old Street um, extension. Um, but it, we do tie into the gravity line that belongs to Hingham, but the capacity of that line and the capacity of their pumping station is somewhat limited. So my gut feeling is any significant extension would have to go all the way to Hull. And um, the avenue of least resistance may be um, Forest Ave um, and heading across that way. Why, you think they have more capacity in those lines? I believe they do. Yeah, I mean, it would have to go all the way up Atlantic Ave uh, in Hull, but um, I believe that was one of um, the proposed alternatives from Hull at one point in time. Mm -hmm. the oh. you know, one of the things in their proposed uh, agreement was to have us put a new dedicated six inch line from north cohasset right to their treatment plant and that to me is millions of dollars um and so that's something that i don't think you know we can't do something like you said the 37 million dollars to sewer it that's something that just doesn't make financial sense or anything else for just, it just is out of there. Um, and I think there's fear on my part that there are, you know, just put bringing 180,000 gallons down and tying it into our plan is, we don't know what that's gonna do in terms of we can't treat it right now. Um, and how do we, put it on a line now to go to Hull and have it bypass our plant. We're not built to do that. We can't, are we gonna go ahead and build, uh, build pressure lines to the village? Um, the railroad track is, the, is the, the best possible way to go. The straightest line, the least disruption, the, the least obstacles because they built it for Crown Lab for, you know, going down several feet and putting all the ballast in and everything else. And um, they built it in situate from North situate to the treatment plant. Um, and if, the, and that's gravity, the first half of it was gravity. And if Hull, if situate wants to put a pressure line, they could use that as a sleeve uh, and have it go um, towards Hull um, instead of using it, you know, as a gravity, the opposite direction. So just that I don't, there just isn't enough thought to this. And, the, this no. and, then, and there's not enough thought to me on what they can do to their existing plant to increase capacity. But so I, was, full I, I was told they could upgrade the plant facility, but it was gonna be $14 million and they didn't wanna spend 14 million, they'd rather spend four and hook up to Cohasset. And I, I'm saying that the answer can't be the path of least resistance every time. And well, I don't think the least resistance is going through going through Cohasset. So I'm saying it's it's the answer to everything is just hook it up to Cohasset instead of taking a hard look at what they can do over there. Um, that sewer line that was put in in North Situate um, when the when they uh, redid the the train station, I was told they never hooked it up to their main. No, sewer they didn't. System. It's missing yeah. one component, which is a pump station halfway up. Halfway yeah, up. and it, why they never completed, it, I have no idea, and that. that could have solved some other issues. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I think and continuing to expand, you know, toll brothers yeah. and stuff like that. How do you? And that's their government, not ours. Right. I think the right. cost of them conveying it all the way to Hull is going to be a uh, an eye opener for them. And at that point in time, when they see that type of cost, um, they'll start looking at their own plan for upgrades. Well, that was that thirty-five million dollar price tag, right? Dedicated line from situate to home. Yeah, well, versus 13 million for their own plant. So they wanted but a huge amount as of, they wanted to have us pay for uh, 
the entire retrofit of their plant that they had to do because of the, the yeah. disaster they had. Um, and so, so anyway, so we talked to the selectmen, the, the, the selectmen aren't gonna know, you know, 3A from railroad tracks versus South Main Street and just think perhaps that South Main Street's the easiest thing because you can go ahead and connect all those houses and, and, and do it all at one time. I, 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 I think we're gonna have a fight. If we go down South Main Street, I think the town goes berserk. If we go under the track, under the railroad track would be the easiest way to go. Right. That's a great idea. But it, 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 you know, the thing is the idea goes back about uh, 60 years when uh, the railroad left. And one of the things we wanted to do was to have that available to, to sewer Forest Avenue and from the first plants that we did. And that never, that never happened because the, the people didn't want to pay for it. Now, the only other obstacle is gonna be the town I think likely is not gonna pay 50% of the share of sewering South Main Street. I think they would follow along what was done with the 450 people at the Little Harbor District and making it so that they pay 100%. And now you, now you have a small group of people that are gonna want the town to pick up part of the cost and the town to say, oh no, you're gonna pay the whole cost. And that cost of $7 million has to be divided by the people. And is that something that's gonna be you know, necessarily passed, you know, the, the funding of it. Yeah. So. Well, um, so what's the I, agenda with the selectmen? Did they say what they want to talk about or just an agreement? It's going to be, a, yeah, well, you'll see there's a, Corey wants to have this read a motion that basically says, you know, we're going to do, you know, hands across the sea and, and, you know, that we have, we basically will take the leadership of it and give them regular updates and all that kind of stuff. So, Brian, you got, you got your hand up. Yeah, thanks, Bill. So, just a couple of, uh, I'll, 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 I'll maybe in the background tonight, but the, um, just some facts. So, the, the IMA with Hull um, expires in 2028. So, the, I, I've the heard town manager, which the town manager came to us last month and said not to focus on it. We've got plenty of time. No, so I, I'm just saying I've heard the date 2026 out there because there's a couple of dates. I think when it was started getting drafted, it was like uh, 1996, but it, it's 30 years from from uh, 1998. So it's 2028. There's also an IMA with Hingham that you need to consider in conjunction with that because we don't send it directly to Hull. We send it to Hingham right. pump station and they pump it to Hull. So there's another IMA there. That's fact two. Um, Atlantic Ave was in, in Hull was just sewered in the last couple of years because it worked with the Straits Pond folks over there, and I, I'm, I would, uh, I'd make a, I'd bet a lot of money that they didn't size it for conveyance. It's probably just a, you know, a line to a dead end on the on the Coasset side, and just uh, on the train tracks is you know there's federal regs and uh, having done some work around the railroads, it's it may be cost prohibitive to do repairs and stuff in, in the railroad layout. And I know that's a Citroen thing you're talking about, but going in there isn't just a, uh, I think an approval from the T you'd probably have to get, they'd have to get some federal permissions or something like that. And yeah. just working in and around the fouling area, which is 15 out, feet outside of the rail, you have, the details are, are astronomical. You have to get flagmen and it's, you know, it's multiple thousand dollars a day just to work within that area. Uh, so those are things I just wanted to bring up for points if they come up tonight. Um, All right. Well, thanks. Yep. All right, guys, I, um, I've got to go. I'm late for my 12 o'clock uh, call. So um, by a little bit. Is there any, does anyone else have something quick they want to deal with or is good? No. no, but I think we need more from Situate on what they expect. Oh, of course. Yeah, we got to have a meeting with them. Um, and it certainly doesn't hurt to inquire with the T. I thought the more that they'd want money rather than something else, because I was involved with them with uh, fiber optic, uh, uh, fiber optic things on some of the rail yards. 
So everything was related to money. <laughs> and uh, and like, like Brian said, you know, they, they got to have certain requirements that you do this and that and that. But, you know, that would be a project that you dig on weekends because the train could stop on weekends and, and uh, you could pay them whatever money they would be getting if they had riders in the trains, which they don't have many of. Well, so. we don't have to worry, we don't have to worry about paying them so that's that's right. somebody else's deal no but it's it's just that it should be looked at as as an option yep. and it, i agree it not be, and the same way with 3a you want to go down 3a mm. figure it out you know and it, it'd be and it'd be nice to uh I, i'd like to get a list from them of, of what they looked at comprehensively and and what the costs were and what the decision tree was to move on to something else I think I, you know, as we've said before, I, I'm probably not the only one. I think sewering 3A opens us up to becoming the next uh, Natick or Hingham or something like that. We'll have Avalon, you know, it'll be Cohasset Avalon instead of something else. So I think it'll too much development, my my opinion. Yeah. Well, and then of course the fourth option is the is for us as a remote plant, uh, you know, in the Beechwood area. Um, or somewhere else that there's yeah. some property. Um, and, um, you know, and, and I don't, but the fifth option is for Situate to put a remote plant themselves if they want to and let the developers pay for that. They have land, more than we do. A lot more land. So, okay, I make a motion to adjourn. I'll care um, a second. All, right. All in favor, Bill McGowan, aye. Thank you. Okay, All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks. All right. See you tonight. Yep. Bye. Bye, everyone. See you. Bye, everyone.